Hi everyone, and welcome to day nine of our Lent devotionals. Um, just so you're aware, we're not going to be doing them on Sundays because Sundays are actually not included in the 40 days of Lent. So if you're wondering um, if you missed a day, you didn't, don't worry. Um, Sundays, we're not going to be doing them. But today um, is day nine, which means we are starting um, a new section, a new theme. And this section is what does God do? So with that also means that um, we are going to be starting, sorry, that was the last one, uh, setting a new intention for this series as well. So let's um, start by setting our intention for this section. In this third section of reflections, I want to invite you to consider God's activity in the world. For some people, there is certain uncomfort there's certain comfort attached to the idea of God being, but the idea of God doing, God's actions and activity in our world opens up a whole new set of questions and complexities. What does God do? How does God do it? Toward what purpose does God act in the world? And what do we make of the times when God doesn't act? Some questions to consider as we move throughout this section of the series is, one, what do you stand to lose and what do you stand to gain by opening yourself up to the prospect of activity of an, act, of an active God in your life? Two, what sense, what have you sensed, when have you sensed God activity in your life so far? Three, where do you currently derive a sense of purpose and direction for your life? Four, how open might you be to new articulation of purpose? And five, how important is it in your own sense of purpose that your own sense of purpose aligns with God's? So let's pray um, for this new section and the next couple of days of the devotionals in um, this section of the book. Living God. The balance between doing and being is a hard one to maintain. Forgive me when I get that balance wrong. Make me aware of your own being and doing, your character and your activity in my life so that I may live a life of wholeness and purpose. Meet with me in these coming days and reveal your loving activity to me. I pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So the verse um, that we're going to look at for day nine, which is subtitled God's activity, we're actually going to be looking at two verses. So we're going to be looking at first Hebrews four, verse 12. And it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing souls and spirits, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The second one that we'll be reflecting on in this passage today comes to us from John 5 verses 15 to 17. And it says, the man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, my father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. So our reflection um, comes right after this. So for those science nerds, I think you're going to like this um, first part of the reflection for today. On February 13th, 2009, a group of scientists, educators, and space enthusiasts alike assembled in NASA's Jet Perpulation Laboratory in Pasadena, California for a somber and celebratory occasion. They gathered to announce the official end of the Mars rover mission that had launched some 15 years earlier, a mission that surpassed their wildest expectations. In 2004, two robotic rovers one named Spirit and the other named Opportunity 
landed on Mars. The hope was that they would spend 90 Martian days collecting data, studying geological components, and transmitting images of the Martian land back to Earth. Exceeding all hopes, Spirit kept working until 2010. Even better, Opportunity kept at it until June of 2018, when a planet-wide dust storm buried its solar panels and the puppy-sized rover made its last transmission. Both Spirit and Opportunity had a really good run. Little rovers that could broker new grounds in terms of Martian exploration. The data they retrieved helped ignite our imagination about interplanetary exploration and helped tell the history of and discover the possibilities that exist on Mars. When opportunity went silent and all efforts to reconnect with it had been exhausted, there was a real sense of grief in the scientific community. Grief mixed with celebration. Sometimes life is like that when the ones we love go silent. There, were, there are some who have the impression that God is like a non-functioning Mars rover, far away, silent, lifeless, and covered in dust. Maybe God had worked at one point, they tell themselves, for people long ago, but no longer. Maybe God's mission, like that of spirit and opportunity, was complete. God might have had a good run, some people attest, but surely that run is now over, right? As Christians, we affirm the exact opposite. We affirm that God is indeed alive and active and intervenes in our everyday world in big ways and small ways. Though not always in the ways or with the timing that we might expect. We observe a God who reveals to us images of what our world is like and calls us to discover new possibilities of abundant living for all of creation. Our experiences show us that God does stuff and that and that's just as true today as it was in biblical times, as it was before the dawning of creation. If only we have ears to hear and eyes to see. Moreover, we affirm that God is active in our world in ways that reveal God's own nature to us. We know God's character, in part at least, by looking at things that God does in our world. For instance, if you turn to the Psalms, you'll find all sorts of verbs that indicate the kinds of things God does in the world. Here's a collection of verbs from just one Psalm, Psalm 47, that describes all kinds of things God does in our world. So I've actually taken a picture of it and um, put it here for you guys to see. So this is a really large list. Um, so builds up, casts to the ground, satisfies, gathers, covers, sends, heals, supplies, spreads, binds up, makes grow, scatters, determines, provides, stirs up, calls, delights, reveals, sustains, strengthens, satisfies, and blesses. These are all words you just describe God's action in our world. When we consider the kinds of of actions God undertakes in the world, we get a sense of who God is. We see God's power, goodness, love for all creation, God's love and steadfastness. And when we consider God's most signature action in the world, coming to earth in the form of Jesus, we get a sense of God's longing to be with us in all our hardships and struggles. Holy One, grant us the eyes to see and the ears to hear, and the openness of our hearts to perceive your actions and activity in the world today. Help us to know you are 
more so we may recognize your voice when it calls to us. So we'll move on to um, a time of reflection now just to kind of see um, how we can respond to these verses. So the first question that uh, is asked is, when have, when have you had a sense of, not has, had a sense of God's activity in your life or the lives of those around you? What verbs would you attach to God's actions? So as I talked about previously, um, I've definitely seen God at work and acting through my life and through um, the life of those around me. And I see that a lot with the opportunities I've had to have God save me from myself <laughs> um, and from things that I was doing that were harmful to myself, which were not great. Um, and feeling that forgiveness of God through all that as well has been huge in my life. And I think the, the action words I would attach to God's action is really um, a lot of what was described earlier. So a lot of these words, right? So he was, or God was healing. He was stirring up my emotions. He was blessing me. They were sustaining me. They were revealing things about myself that I maybe was unsure about. Um, so for me, a lot of those words do resonate with me, right? And that showing me um, love and kindness and graciousness and forgiveness, which is huge. So when have you felt a lack of God's activity in your own life? What did that stir up in you? Does it feel like an absence and neglect or life freedom? How do you think God views those experiences of distance between us? So this one's a really interesting question for reflection for me. Um, and I think there have been times where I have also felt that when I was really struggling and I was really hurting and needed an answer from God that I didn't get it, right? Um, or maybe I just didn't get it in that moment. I didn't get it in that time span that I had allotted to God to make themselves known in my life, make myself feel something that would tell me to continue on, right? Um, and again, a lot of those came from moments when I was severely depressed, when I was uh, in those moments of suicidal thoughts and ideations and wanted to have that um, sense of God in my life and I just wasn't feeling it. And it felt like neglect. It felt like I had been turned away and that God had turned their back on me and didn't care um, what I was going to do. And it hurt. It didn't feel like freedom. It felt like pain and hurt and neglect, uh, which isn't always, you know, <laughs> great. It's not really what we want to feel. But looking back now, I know why those things happened, right? And it's created a larger purpose in my life. And I do think that, you know, God views this distance between um myself and them as a testing, right? I never saw it as a negative necessarily, but I saw it as my faith being tested to come back to God each time. Because I know a lot of people who have turned away when times got hard. So for me, it was, you know, telling myself God is testing me to see if I will come back, to see if I will remember that I am a beloved girl, child of God made from love um, and how that would reflect back on my own life. The next question asks us to read Psalm 121 and 139. Uh, if you haven't done that, you can pause and do that now or you can do it afterwards. So how might your life be different if you observed, sorry, if you lived each day expecting and observing God's action 
God's active presence around you. So for me, I really try to do this uh, through a couple of different ways. So I try to observe God's actions in my life by simply telling myself, like, who is God bringing into my life today? And how can I help them? How can they help me? How can I bring God's vision of what's to be forward through the people that I am surrounding myself with? And what does that look like for us moving forward? And I think all of those things are really important um, and can make a big difference in our lives. So for me, it's something that I try to observe every day and expect that God will bring something into my life that will help me learn something new each and every day, whether that's one of my clients, whether it's one of the students at the school that I work at, um, or it's one of the adults around me in my life. It can come from anywhere and anyone can become my inspiration for, for my day. So I hope you enjoyed our devotionals for today and we hope to see you back tomorrow. Bye everyone, have a great day.